about um, uh, putting in some solar farms in some of the retired lands? Yes. Um, uh, it's not a question, but you could comment on that. Sure. Uh, the question was, uh, uh, Tom had heard that we were uh, thinking about putting in a solar farm on some of our lands. Uh, we think that uh, this region is ideally situated for the development of solar energy projects. There are some issues related to transmission, um, but uh, the state of California is currently looking at new transmission lines through this region. We own um, uh, a lot of ground that is not being used as, a, as effectively as it could, and we've been approached by many organizations about the potential of selling land for the development of solar projects. Uh, there's a very large project that's going to involve about 27,000 acres in Kings County, and the district owns approximately 12,000 acres uh, that have been uh, proposed for the development of the solar project. Uh, we actually have, uh, have uh, some interesting uh, allies in this, uh, organizations like NRDC that have historically been opposed to some of the things that we want to do, like raising shafts and dams, I actually think that this is a good idea because it would take uh, uh, solar development out of some more environmentally sensitive areas and, and put it in an area where it's already been disturbed. Does Westlands just buy water, or do they have plans to buy water? I forget about contracts. I mean, just to buy the water. Yeah, well, well, when you say buy the water, yeah. uh, we do buy water on an annual basis. We, mm -hmm. we, we, and we have long-term transfer agreements with some entities uh, because our, our supply of project water is not adequate. And so on an annual basis, we go out on the market and we buy water. Um, uh, but we don't have any plans to, to purchase a permanent water right. Um, we did buy, in addition to the fishing club that we bought, we bought some land in the Yolo Bypass. Um, and we purchased it because we wanted to use that land for the creation or the restoration of tidal marshland habitat. Uh, there was some concern about at the time we bought it because that land does have some very good water rights. They have um, um, a, a, water, a license to appropriate water that dates to 1919. And there was some concern that Westlands was buying it for the, the water. Um, but we've made no effort to move that water down. Yes. Um, since the Custerson, uh, you guys plugged the, the drain up because of all that. Um, and your big area, what have you guys been doing since then with all the, um, what the guy called damaged water? Well, it's been, it's been accumulating in the, in the crop root zone. And some of so that underneath it's been accumulating. It, it's been, and, and some of the land that you saw today um, looks like alkali flat. Yeah. I mean, there are big areas of, of, of salty ground, and that's because um, the, the salt has not been leached out of the soils. The, the geology of this area, I don't know if you, if, if you discussed this, and Carl can certainly speak to it better than I can, but the geology of this area is that there is a, 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 a I don't want to call it impermeable, but nearly impermeable clay layer that's relatively near the surface of the ground in some areas of Westlands. And as the, as the uh, irrigation water is applied, it, it percolates down to that, that clay layer and then begins to accumulate. Uh, I will observe that um, the need for drainage today in Westlands is significantly less than it was in, in, in 1977 when the drain went into service because of the conservation. Okay. There was a report that was issued in 1982 called the Rainbow Report. And it was a report that talked about, it was, a, I don't know why it's called the Rainbow Report, but it was developed by the Natural Heritage Institute under contract with the Bureau of Reclamation. And what, they, what the uh, NHI proposed in the Rainbow Report was a series of, of uh, conservation actions and, um, and land retirement and reuse uh, that wouldn't solve on a permanent basis the drainage issue, but would certainly um, help delay the serious problems associated with drainage. Uh, I don't want to say, I, I can't say that we did it, um, that we did it consciously, but in fact what we have done in Westlands is we've implemented the rainbow report, and it's worked. There is, there is, today in Westlands, um, there is a, a, the demand for drainage is significantly less than it was um, 15 years ago. Because uh, well, there's just... Uh, but some of the land you've just had to follow because it just got too... Yes, too yes, similar. and, and there's, there's no question that, that the, the, the accumulation of salt is continuing, and that's, that, in the long term, that's going to be a, a big problem that we're going to have to deal with. But it, uh, uh, I think we have delayed the day of reckoning until we can find a, a good, workable solution. It's called the Rainbow Report because of the colors on the cover. Is that Carl said?
says it was the rainbow report because of the colors on the cover. <laughs> That's nice. How are you doing that time? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I know the reds have some. I don't want to take up all the reds' time. Are there, are there any other questions out there that you want to? There was one over here. We'll make this okay. the last one. All right. Great. Uh, from time to time, you hear talk about question was, from time to time, and the gentleman has heard about uh, proposals to integrate the operations of the CDP and the SWP, the San Valley Project, the State Water Project, because Westland's a proponent of it, and, um, if, uh, and, and how would it benefit us? The, the answer is we are a strong proponent of integrating the operation of the two projects. And you can look at multiple years as, uh, you know, pick any year as an example. 2007, was a dry year. So let's go back to 2006. In 2006, the Bureau of Reclamation ended up spilling 2.6 million acre feet of water. 2.6 million acre feet of water out of Shasta Reservoir to meet flood control criteria. 2005 and 2006 were wet. And so going into December of 2006, Reclamation had a lot of water in Shasta Reservoir. It hadn't been able to move it south through its um, pumping facilities because the pumping capacity at, at Tracy, now the Jones pumping plant, is limited. And so to meet, to create space in that reservoir for a subsequent wet year, they released 2.6 million acre feet of water. It wasn't on a schedule to benefit fish. It wasn't on a schedule to benefit downstream water users. They just let it go to create space. Now, 2007 was a dry year, and San Luis Reservoir did not fill. But beyond that, if Reclamation had released some of that water from Shasta Reservoir earlier in the year, it could have been, it could have been pumped by the, the Banks pumping plant, part of the state project, and moved the Metropolitan Water District to Southern California that has a, a, a very large reservoir, or moved to some of the groundwater storage that you probably saw yesterday, put in the ground, so that it would have been available in a year like 2007, which was dry, but we couldn't do it because the permits for the operation of the State Water Project are different than the permits for the operation of the Central Valley Project. The pumping plants are five miles apart, even that. But, um, the place of use is different, and so Reclamation could not release water from Shasta to be picked up at banks to be stored in Metropolitan. It would have been a violation of its water right permits. And so I think there's, a, there's one example, and I could point to hundreds of examples of how integration of the two projects would be a much more efficient use of our existing resources. I've heard people in the environmental community say, we don't use our water resources efficiently. And they're, they're right, we don't. There are lots of things that we can do better to make the, the resources that we have today extend farther than they do. Now, how could Westlands benefit from the, uh, from the integration of the project? I'll make this very, very quick because I'm running out of time. Um, the CDP has storage. The SWP has pumping facilities in the Delta that have a lot of excess capacity. We have little capacity in the Delta. They have very little storage. They've got one reservoir upstream. And so um, it, most of the studies, well, all of the studies that have been done, have shown that the integration of the two projects would provide water supply benefits for both the CDP and the SWP. Now, as we have new restrictions on the operation of the projects, the potential benefits are diminished. And that's one of the reasons that we would like to see some flexibility restored to the operation of the project so we can operate and manage these, these, these resources more efficiently. Well, thank you so much.